Hey everybody, I'm Tiffany. I'm Sal. And we're gonna be giving you a list of our top seven comic book movies, rated R, that we're still waiting for or we think should be happening. That's right. We've had Logan, we've had Deadpool, let's get some more! Yeah, absolutely. But before we jump into it, we have a little partnership with our friends over at Wizard World, oh. and you're gonna get an opportunity to win your own tickets to a Wizard World show near you. Yeah. So stay tuned to the end of the episode to catch that, and also use the promo code we provide to buy your own Wizard World tickets and save 20% off your own. Nice. So let's jump into it. The first movie that we are waiting for, R-rated, yes. from a comic book adaptation. What do you got? I got Sex Criminals. Ooh, Sex Criminals. Right? I that mean, sounds like it's got to be R-rated. It's it's almost got to be more than R-rated. Sex Criminals itself focuses, of course, on a young woman who discovers that when she has an orgasm, she can stop time. Right. Um, she meets another man who has a similar issue. They have this whirlwind relationship, and it goes on from there. We learn about this whole organization that's involved with it. But, of course, it's called Sex Criminals, and they're not holding back on the sexual elements of it. Hmm. The story itself is a lot of fun. The characters have a lot of personality. And I, and I gotta tell you, I think it would be a pretty cool movie if they could kind of distill at least the first chapter down. Next on our list, what uh, do you got? I got American Vampire. So vampires have no shortage of presence in this cinema. This is true. Let's be honest. But we have not seen Snyder's vampires. Following a young woman and her journey with vampires and inevitably becoming one. Oh. That sounds really cool. I know that you could at least do the first volume. I think you definitely you could. You could turn that into a series, I think. Film series. Yeah, so I you agree. You make multiple. Absolutely. And honestly, there's a lot of material there that's already just ready to go. So the next one on the list, I gotta say, how about Miracle Man? Oh, Miracle Man. Why isn't this a thing? <laughs> there is a world we live in where they have already made more Superman deconstructions yeah. than Superman movies. Let's get some more on that. Especially because Miracle Man, although I gotta say, Miracle Man has more to do with a Shazam Captain Marvel adaptation than a Superman. But still, the story is so pure and interesting and also, of course, deeply grounded and rooted in the kind of stuff that an R-rated film can only give. If you. Right. I think that this is a story that we are finally ready for, and I think we can actually make possible using the technology available to us. And I think the audiences are kind of waiting for something like this as well. It's just, you may think you've seen a Superman or super character deconstruction that gives you that kind of R-rated gut punch, mm -hmm. but if you've never read Miracle Man, you ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> Alright, so the next one on the list... Rat Queens. Yeah. So we're going to go totally fantasy here. But Rat Queens is about a quartet of fighters. I, wanna, I don't want to call them warriors because one is definitely a warrior, one's a thief, and two of them use magic. And they live in this kooky world where it is definitely high fantasy, but... They use modern language in this world. They utilize modern uh, conveniences in a sense. There's drugs, there's alcohol, there's a lot of sex going on in this world. But the world itself is grim and gritty, but in a lived in way and not an over the top sort of sense. Mm. I would love to see this world brought to life and I'd love to see a quartet of actresses bring these characters to life because they're so all over the place, mm -hmm. but they somehow always come together and fumble their way through these adventures. Here's something we haven't really talked about on this channel all that much, but fables. Yeah, you know, I think that they've been working on a fables thing yes. for a long time. In fact, there's a show that's similar to fables that apparently started out as an actual fables adaptation. But mm -hmm. I think like a full-on fables movie could be really, really epic. It's a, it's a tall order, let's yes. be honest. There's a, there are countless volumes of the series. There are countless spin-offs of the series. That's true. It has a rabid fan base. Yeah. It has so much world building, and that could be great or it could be not great. You have just time. checked all the boxes that make studio executives salivate. Right. Like, oh, it has a dedicated <laughs> audience. You can make a million spin-offs. Yeah. It has an endless source material. Yeah. The best thing about it is you can really employ a lot of really creative people. You can yes. make great prosthetics. This is one of the books on this list that is really accessible by a lot of audiences that aren't just the fan base. Because you're dealing with fairy tales, at least, at the, the intro of it. You right. know, like, people know those stories, and then to place them in this, like, pseudo-real world... Mm -hmm. It, they can just get into it. They totally understand what's going on. You don't have to have a lot of backstory like we would with some of the other books. So we have two more on our list. Uh, so the next one I want to talk about, Sandman. Where is Sandman? If we're not going to get a series, I'd love to get a movie. And I think you start with the first volume. It's pretty complete in its storytelling. You could do from the beginning to end of that. 
they never did another Sandman movie after it. If I, it was done well, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I know that <laughs> Joseph Gordon-Levitt had been apparently attached to yes. and been working on a Sandman movie. I'm sure that fell right Where, Which apart. is kind of sad. I like him a lot as an actor, and if he was himself going to play Morpheus, I would love to see Would you be he, okay with that? I kind of would, because I he's the kind of guy who I think would have, like, read everything. <laughs> And been like, okay, I have to do this justice. Yeah, that's fair. Whether or not he could, I don't know. But I, I appreciate when an actor respects the source material. Yeah. Again, this is one of those stories where it's like, maybe the first volume is the best to do and then not do anymore. Because after that, everything is so intrinsically tied to everything else. Mm -hmm. it might you might be, lose your audience. You might lose the audience. And you might also find it difficult to find stop points. Technically, there is a little mini film that covers part of the first volume of Sandman, but that's the kind of sequence that would really do well with an R rating, oh, obviously. Yeah, you can't, yeah, you, you, it would, you would be shortchanging its yeah. effectiveness by doing anything else. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and honestly, I'm sure there'd be certain things they have to cut back on Yeah. A bit. Still with the R rating, there's only so much you can do, but the R rating, I, I think, for this type of film, you can't do it anything else. You yeah. cannot do it as anything else. We've been waiting for it for 25 years. Let's get some more. We really have. Um, so the final one on this list is one that I don't necessarily want to be on this list. Yeah. Personally, mm -hmm. but it's on the list anyway. And everyone's waiting for it. Everybody, I've seen a lot of chatter about this for it. inevitable movie. But I don't agree with it, but it's still on the list. Saga. I don't agree with that at all. However, if you are going to do it, it has to be rated R, if not rated beyond that. Yeah, I don't know how you can get away with being faithful to the source material without going at least R. Right. Or a hard R. Well, I, I think certain um, elements of the book would probably be... Um, left out. Left out or not done to the degree that they should have. Like That's the sextillion... Fair. Yeah, I don't know how we're going to see that. We're going to see very little of that. Like, mm -hmm. we probably see a lot of, like, bright flashy lights and, like, what they thought would be, like, appropriate for that. But I don't, I think we're going to lose a lot of the, like, hard shock of that place. Right. There's a lot of full page hard shock moments in that series <laughs> that would be difficult to just go, yeah, we're going to film that right? and just put that out there. Now, for me, what makes this series, I think, very difficult to adapt to film is the way that the story flows and how it has no true end. Right. Yet. And so to do that, you have already signed yourself up to do multiple films. Yeah. Um, and if you don't complete those films, it's going to be very like... It would feel eh. weird. Yeah. You know what you do? You uh, make the movie in France and make the government pay for it. <laughs> that way you have an endless budget. And even if nobody sees it, it'll still exist. I don't know what you're talking about. No, nobody does because they didn't see it. <laughs> but we did. But that, uh, yeah, that concludes our top yeah. seven rated R movies that we are still waiting for. Right. Those movies that just... Haven't yet materialized and probably, honestly, will never materialize. Right, and there are plenty more out there, but this is just the top seven list for right now. Yeah. Maybe we'll do another one of these because you never know. As comics are written and uh, as films are dropped off because you think they're going to be made, the list grows ever on. This is true. So I want you guys out there to help contribute to this list. And so here's the deal. I would like to see one of your suggestions in the comments down below for another comic book movie adaptation that's rated R that you'd like to see that was not on this list. And we're going to randomly select one or two winners in the comments. And those of you out there who do win will be able to get some free Wizard World tickets. Wow. But don't worry. Out there, if you are not the winner, you do not leave empty-handed. We're going to give you a coupon code if you use the promo code COMICPOP20 when you purchase your Wizard World ticket in many, many cities because Wizard World has lots of different cons yeah. all across America. You can pick up tickets by using the promo code COMICPOP20, pick up some tickets, and go check them out and enjoy your, your Wizard World Comic-Con experience. Yeah, they're, they're a good show. They focus a lot on pop culture, so you get a little bit of everything. It's a, it's a good con. That's right. The closest one for us is Wizard World Philly, which, mm -hmm. of course, we may be attending oh. in a pr pr rather significant capacity. So wow. congratulations and good luck to all of you down there in the comments. We'll see you there. And of course, we'll see you guys here on Comic Pop. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and see us every day, five days a week for something new and comics related. I'm Sal. And I'm Tiffany. See you then.